So now we're going to send this over to Trevor. No, we often hear, you know, be careful, snow, you can have heart attacks when you're shoveling. Well, no, there's good news and there's bad news. And, you know, 15 minutes of shoveling is considered a, a good moderate activity. And it's a great way to keep in shape and to burn extra calories. The bad news is that there is an increase in both fatal and non-fatal heart attacks. And also people often will continuously overexert themselves and are becoming injured because they want to get the job done. So who should think twice about shoveling snow? Well, elderly people, people with a history of heart attacks, people with a history of heart disease, high blood pressure or high cholesterol, smokers, people that lead a sedentary lifestyle, and also people with existing back problems. So why not go out and buy a snowblower? Well, you don't necessarily have to run out and buy one. Not everyone who shovels snow is going to have a heart attack or get injured. Snow shoveling can be a great exercise when performed correctly and with safety in mind. With that being said, you know, prior to shoveling, you want to avoid any caffeine or nicotine. Uh, these are stimulants that place extra stress on the heart, increase heart rate, and cause blood vessels to constrict. You also want to avoid eating a large meal. It places extra demands on the digestive system and can lead to stomach cramps. And also make sure you drink plenty of water. Dehydration is much of a problem in the wintertime as it is in the summer. You know, dress warmly. Andre went through a lot of the uh, you know, sort of actions you can take and uh, equipment you can get to uh, be warm. But the nose, ears, hands, and feet need extra protection in the cold. You know, wear a turtleneck, sweater, toque, scarf, face protection, wool socks, and waterproof boots. Place a scarf or other face protection over the nose and mouth to avoid breathing in cold air. And dress in layers so you can remove them as needed. And of course, make sure you wear the proper footwear. Uh, boots with slip-resistant soles can really help to minimize the risk of slips, trips, and falls when you're shoveling the driveway. Try and warm up five to 10 minutes before getting the joints moving and increase blood circulation. You know, you can march on the spot, climb some stairs, um, go for a quick walk around the block. Uh, stretch, you know, gently stretch the arms, back, arms, shoulders, legs, and be wary of your back. It's very vulnerable when you first wake up. So you want to try and avoid going out, getting dressed, and going out and shoveling snow when you first wake up. Your back muscles stiffen while you sleep, and exerting yourself too much when you first wake up really increases the risk of getting an injury. Uh, we do have a fact sheet that built available on our website, ocal.on.ca, uh, called Preventative Maintenance, the Importance of Stretching at Work. And it goes through different exercises you can do to warm up every segment of your body before engaging in any heavy exercise. Now, it's actually important to pick the right shovel for you. Uh, the most important features of a feet shovel that you should look at are the weight of the shovel, the length of the shaft, the type of shaft, the handle type, and also the blade size and the shape. With respect to handle length, you want to pick a shovel that reaches to up to mid chest height. So your handle should actually be right at the middle of your chest. If your shovel is too long or too short, it can actually result in increased bending of the back and therefore increasing the risk. Flat shovels are better at cutting through deep snow drifts, so clearing areas left by a snow plow. However, rounded scoops can push snow, allowing you to make a steady pass down the sidewalk or to scoop up the snow to remove it completely. For blade type, uh, metal blades, they're great for chipping through ice and carrying heavier loads while holding up to obstacles such as you know, screwed axe and gravel. 
They're very strong, durable, and capable of carrying more than their plastic counterparts. Uh, they weigh considerably more than the plastic, however, which can contribute to back strain and make you fatigue and tire out more quickly. Plastic blades are lightweight, flexible, easy to maneuver. Uh, they're much, being much lighter than the metal blades, they can be handled easily and move more quickly. However, they are easily damaged by screws and rocks and not suited through chipping through ice. Um, the snow does not stick as easy to plastic as well, which makes it a big efficiency when it comes to actually moving the snow. Uh, you can also get a combination of a plastic blade with what's called a wear strip. So that's got a, a, it's a plastic shovel with a metal strip on the underside of it. Uh, it gives the strength for the metal edge for being able to get through ice, but have the lightweight uh, benefits of a plastic blade. However, you want to try and avoid uh, shovels with metal edges if you're shoveling sidewalks, cracked surfaces, or locked stone driveways, because when you start moving, that metal blade can actually catch into those grooves and you end up getting the shovel sort of stabbing you right in the stomach. For the handle material, uh, there's two main types. The first is the wooden. It's lightweight, strong, and durable. Can last many years and are also very easy and inexpensive to replace when the time comes. Wood naturally expands and contract, contracts with the weather. So you need some time to make sure that you check the screws attaching to the handle uh, to make sure that they're tight. And uh, apply a light coating of linseed oil to your wooden handle once per year to keep it strong and water resistant. For fiberglass handles, they're the, the most durable of the handle types, but they're much heavier than the wood, which can cause back strain. But a benefit is they're not subject to changes due to the weather, so they're not going to rust or bend, and they are more difficult to break. Uh, plastic handles, they're very lightweight, easy to maneuver. If stored indoors, the plastic can last for many years, but constant exposure to being out in the sun if left outside can make the plastic become brittle, which leads to cracking and breaking. If weight is the most important issue for you, plastic is the best choice for a snow shovel handle. Metal handles are made of uh, lightweight metal, such as aluminum, and uh, however, making them light also makes them more vulnerable to bending when placed under great stressure or pressure, such as heavy weights. Uh, they can also rust if not dried off between use. So hanging them out of the weather to dry uh, is important. And they're also relatively inexpensive, which can also be an important factor. Make sure you use a shovel with a smaller blade for throwing snow, uh, about 10 to 14 inches wide. Try to avoid shovels with that metal strip that I talked about when shoveling, uh, especially on sidewalks, cracked surfaces, or interlocked driveways. And using either cooking oil or even car wax can be applied to the uh, snow shovel itself to keep wet snow from sticking to it. Now, uh, what's the recommended rate for shoveling? Well, CCOHS recommends a rate of about 15 scoops per minute. Shoveling should not last longer than 15 minutes and should be followed by a two to three minute break. Shoveling weight, uh, a high rate of shoveling with that 15 scoops per minute, the total weight per shovel load shouldn't exceed five to seven kilograms or 10 to 15 pounds. If you're using a lower rate of shoveling, then you can go up to about 11 kilograms or 24 pounds. So what are actual weights of snow? Well, if an individual was to clear a 16 foot by 30 foot driveway covered in one foot of wet snow, you would actually be moving about four tons of snow to do your driveway. For throwing height and distances, 
uh, the throwing height should not exceed more than 1.3 meters or four feet. The optimal throwing distance should be no further than one meter or three feet. And the load and shoveling rate should be reduced if the tasks require a longer or higher throw. This is why it's actually very important early in the season, not to just pile your snow right at the end of your driveway, but to actually place it further into your yard. Otherwise, you are going to end up with very high snow banks uh, by the time the winter's done, and as a result, increasing your risk of injury. Now, we have a couple of little videos that we're going to show that are actually going to walk you through uh, each process step by step. <laughs> there we go. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Place the front foot close to the shovel. Transfer your weight onto the front foot and use the leg to push the shovel. Shift the weight to your rear foot and keep the load close to the body. Turn your feet in the direction of the throw and throw the snow. In this example, the person is pushing and throwing the snow with a regular shovel. Notice that when throwing the snow, the person must bend down a little farther to grab the shaft of the... In this example, the person is using an ergonomic shovel to push and throw the snow. Notice that when throwing the snow, the person can bend their legs and have a proper posture of the back while throwing the snow. In this example, not only is the person throwing too high and too far away from them, they also don't have the stable base of support. You notice at times they're only standing on one leg, which could lead to a slip or trip hazard. In this example, not only is the person standing with both feet firmly on the ground, they're also trying to get themselves as close to the snowbank as possible before throwing the load to minimize strain on the lower back. Now, there's also different types of ergonomic designs out there for different products. Um, there are some that have like an extra handle attached to it that are supposed to minimize bending. Um, it makes it you know it's pretty good when it comes to lighter snow but with heavier snow it does make it uh, a bit more difficult to use uh there's another t product out there that we're actually going to show a video for uh called the wovel and uh let's see this one in use one of those ergonomic designs is called a wovel in this example the person is using the wovel to push the snow Notice how the person can avoid bending and keep their back straight while pushing the snow. In this example, the person pushes and throws the snow using the wovel. As you've seen in the previous video, throwing the snow using the wovel can be difficult. In this example, the person pushes the snow with the wovel and throws the snow using an appropriate shovel. Um, there's also other tools out there on the market that you can use. You no know, snow floats uh, for larger, bigger snow. Uh, roof rakes for bringing the snow down off your roof so you can, and then shoveling it away afterwards. Uh, electric snow shovels. I've, ice chippers and uh, snow cleats. And I think Andre talked about this a bit with the footwear in his section. So these are anti-slip uh, devices that actually go over top the sole of your boot. So if you are, are on an icy surface, they actually grip in so you're less likely to actually slip. For light snow, start in the center of the driveway and push the snow the longest distance diagonally to the edge of the driveway. Walk back to the start and let your body have a rest. Then push again the longest distance diagonally to the other side. Continue pushing in a spiderweb fashion with each pass getting shorter and shorter so that you're less tired by the time you're done. 
The other advantage to this method uh, for shoveling light snow is that, uh, no, we say less tired, but you're actually, we actually mean less fatigue because as you progress further into the shoveling process, you're actually moving less snow each time. For heavy snow, start in the driveway's middle point. Scoop up the snow and walk it as far off to the side of the driveway as you can. Repeat, working towards the street, clearing a middle strip. Return to the start. Now remove two strips next to the path just cleared. Carry it to the side and repeat. You'll be moving snow the shortest distance as you tire, which leaves piles spaced out. How, and then, of course, how do we use a snowblower properly? For snow blowing, start in the middle of the driveway and work from the beginning to the end, and then make a circular turn and work your way back towards the house again. And then repeat. Keep working in a circular motion until the driveway is complete. Now, uh, Heart attacks. Now, I mentioned this uh, at the very beginning, but you want to watch for signs. Uh, many people do die from heart attacks uh, because they didn't seek medical attention soon enough. You need to really be aware of the signs and symptoms. And if you experience any of the symptoms, stop shoveling and call your physician or 911 immediately. Now, number one signs, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, nausea, or sweating when you have cool or clammy skin. Uh, pain, so sudden pain or discomfort that does not go away with rest. It may feel like a burning, squeezing, heaviness, tightness, or pressure. And it tends to be in the chest, neck, jaw, shoulders, arms, or back. Um, you may also experience a tingling or numbness in your left arm. Uh, chest pain or discomfort that is brought on with exertion and goes away with rest. And in women, the pain actually may be more vague than in men. So some helpful hints for uh, snow removal. Clear snow early and often. During a large snowfall, it's actually better to shovel frequently than waiting for the storm to end and then going out and moving all the snow. Um, when the snow first falls, it's uh, lighter and fluffier, and it's easier to move when the snow's heavy, packed, or wet, or sometimes like what we're having here today uh, with very extreme colds. You could have a very mild day when it's snowing the day before. You wake up the next morning to move it, your snow's all turned to ice. So by going out and doing it in progress as you know, the storm is progressing, you're actually going to be reducing the exertion to your human body. Uh, pace yourself, start out slowly, and take breaks often. Don't rush to clear all the snow out at once. Try pushing and lifting during large snowfalls in small layers. Um, you know, shovel an inch or, or should be an inch or two, shovel a foot or two, rest, and repeat. Uh, make sure that you, know, you are giving yourself and your body a chance to recover. Watch your footing. Make sure that you stand with your hip uh, uh, or sorry, your feet about hip width apart uh, for balance and keep the shovel close to your body. Try throwing, avoid throwing snow uh, too far when it's slippery because you can lose your footing and, and slip and fall. Push rather than lift. Now push your snow with a wide blade handle. And when you have to lift, actually switch to a smaller blade shovel. Make sure you use your legs. Now half fill the shovel uh, bend with your knees, keep your back straight, and lift with your legs. Also, walk your snow to you where you want to place it as opposed to throwing it. These are all going to reduce the amount of strain on your lower back. Uh, avoid awkward throwing postures. Uh, don't throw snow over your shoulder or to the side. If you need to move snow to one side, reposition your feet to face the direction the snow will be moved. 
Do not reach back to push snow. For example, walking backwards while pushing or lifting snow. Watch for ice. No looking out for ice patches or uneven surfaces under the snow or ground that can cause you to slip and fall, such as black ice. Take smaller steps in icy conditions. And of course, wear boots that have slip resistant soles or anti slip cleats or footwear uh, that can be used for those who are more prone to falling. Ask for help. You know, ask someone to help you if the snow shoveling uh, is too much. Listen to your body. If you feel tightness or pain in your chest, stop right away and call your doctor. If you become sore after shoveling, you know, take a hot bath, a hot shower, have a massage, take a pain reliever. If you still don't feel well, see your doctor. Make sure you can see what you're shoveling. Do not let a hat or scarf block your vision. Make sure your glasses are not fogged over. Also think ahead of time. Try to throw your snow far early in the winter. Avoid pushing all of your snow to the end of the driveway. Make a path down the middle of the driveway and push snow to the sides. And keep the snow banks at the same height all the way down the driveway. Uh, when the snowplow comes by, I always call uh, the snowplow driver my worst enemy after a winter storm. Try and shovel the snow as soon as possible as you see the snowplow pass. The sooner you shovel the slush, snow, and ice from the snowplow, the easier it's going to be from your body. If you wait too long, it's going to turn to hard-packed ice, and it's going to be extremely hard to move. Uh, this snow is very heavy, so lift with half-filled shovels only, and make sure you're walking the snow to where you want to place it. When you're using a snowblower, uh, you know, keep the snowblower close to the body. Uh, make sure you stay between the handles. When there's a large amount of snow, don't do full passes. Only do about half. Make sure this, you let the snowblower uh, drive itself. That's why we have them, to help us. So let it do the actual work. I see a lot of people actually trying to push the snowblower and, you know, the re if you want to go a bit faster, increase the speed. Of course, the faster you go, the less jo or, uh, quality job you're going to get of actually cleaning the driveway. Now, be aware of vibration. Try and avoid long periods of uh, snow blowing. Share the job, have job rotation, uh, take breaks. For gripping, it depends on the controls, but some models have a drive train that run only when the lever is pressed, which can be very hard on the brakes or on the wrists. So take a break or share the job, or you could end up having a, you know, your drive train grips actually lock into place. Make sure that you know, if you're doing a long strip that you actually have uh, the drive train into, into position where it's locked. Uh, don't lift the snow blower by yourself if you're going to be moving it. They're extremely heavy. Uh, for example, if you're going to be putting it in the back of your vehicle to go uh, help a family member out, make sure you have someone helping you lift it up into the truck or have a ramp that you can actually drive it up. Uh, watch for changes in elevation or features that stick out, you know, such as bricks, because once again, your snow blower can hit uh, an interlock brick that's out of place and you can end up getting the snow blower in, uh, hitting you in the stomach. Airplugs are also recommended, uh, you know, just to help reduce uh, the noise that you're experiencing. And just on an important note, a study in Detroit identified 43 heart attacks after a series of snowstorms. These attacks were all attributed to physical exertion and 36 occurred while removing snow. Some of these heart attacks occurred while even using a snowblower. So this helps illustrate that while no link can lead to a heart attack, Using a snowblower does not eliminate the possibility of suffering a similar fate. But if you follow the steps we've mentioned, you know, such as letting it do the work for you, the chance of happening is greatly reduced. So take home message. Now make sure that you warm up first. Take your time, especially after a really big snowfall. Make sure you have the proper tools. Dress properly. Take frequent breaks. Stay hydrated and know when to stop.
by planning ahead uh, of time and being prepared for all possible conditions, snow removal can actually be a great exercise. Now, uh, before we get to any questions, we do want to say thank you for attending uh, today's webinar. We do apologize for the glitches. Um, the video will be recorded and uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel with a notification being sent out to uh, all participants. And uh, just a reminder to save the date. You know, every year uh, we, we hold our International RSI Day webinar that's normally held on the last day of February. However, with social distancing and uh, COVID this year, we've actually decided to hold RSI Day month with the first Friday of every week of February uh, being a two hour session divided into a number of different themes. So please stay tuned and save the dates uh, for these upcoming webinars.